Data capture forms are, in my personal opinion, one of the most important components of your website. Let's think about this. You're spending thousands of dollars every month on SEO, pay-per-click, and doing everything you can to drive more traffic to your website. We all know the importance of getting people to your website. We already heard the statistics that you have a 50% higher closing ratio with a lead that comes off your website as opposed to one that you buy. So why do you not take the time and energy to build a good data capture form? I've been out there doing this for a long time and I get amazed every time I go to a website and I click on the quick quote button. And if you look at this one right here, it's a quick quote. There is nothing quick about this quote. Why, if I'm simply telling somebody this is a quick quote, why am I asking for their physical address? If they're on my website, they've done their research, they've searched it, they've found my website, they must live in my area. Why do you need their address at this point? This is not a quick quote. A quick quote should look something like this. Notice, we're asking for a couple key points. We're asking for the name, their email address, their cell phone number, and their other home phone number or work phone number. And then a little note section to get a little more information about what they're looking for. Remember, people are getting to your website because they already have an idea of what they're looking for. You don't need to ask them a lot of questions. You need, don't need to interrogate them. I was on a quote form the other day, look right here, and you can see it was almost like filling out a credit application. This is a huge mistake when it comes to online forms and data capture forms. You need to have the form be simple and clean. The rule of thumb very simply is the less you ask for, the more responses you're going to get. So if you're utilizing one of these out of the box type, you know, quote forms, like a lot of people are, you need to rethink that philosophy. You need to go back to your web developer and say, hey, wait a second, we need to change this. I need to have a true quick quote. The other thing about it is you need to make it appealing. It should not be just a cold, dull form like this one right here. What I recommend is having it built in such a way where you've got a picture, maybe a picture of a happy customer taking delivery of a car, something that elicits a happy response. When somebody sees it, they smile. It makes them feel more comfortable. It lets them know that you're doing business with a real company. It is important to build these forms so they work. You're spending a lot of money driving traffic to the website. You need to capitalize on every opportunity. The next thing, talking about these forms, you should have a link to this information, to this form, on every page of your website. It should not be a challenge for a customer to go find a way to communicate with you on your website. You need to make it simple and easy. I love the old AOL philosophy. AOL was all about buttons and redundant buttons. They wanted to make it really simple, and that's why AOL did so well when they first came out, because anybody who was new to the internet could go on AOL, and they could easily navigate and figure out what to do. Oh, I need to go here. Oh, there's a button for that. Oh, I need to go here. There's a button for that. They made it very simple. You need to take that same approach. So many times I've been on a website for a dealer looking at their website, and I have no idea how to contact a dealer. The other thing, while we're touching on this about the dealer websites, please make sure that you have your phone number at the top of your website. It needs to be easy to find, and it should be on every single page. So when you're building these forms, you need to take the time to build them properly, make sure they're easy to use, and ask for as little information as possible. Again, if you do what we're teaching you in this segment, you are going to see the number of emails that you receive from your website. Let's take a couple minutes to review what we learned and go on to the next segment.